All right, so back in your programs, we don't want to look at it in this tiny thing. We'd like to look at it at a decent size. So back in your VMs, uh, we're going to use readelf capital S this time. Awesome password for the win. We're going to do readelf capital S on your hello. Go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to show you all of the section header information. And you're going to see there's going to be lots of section headers, and they've each got these lots of different fields. <clears throat> Starts out with one that has type null, so that's there's nothing there. It's just a bunch of empty stuff. Then it has an interpreter section, and it's just calling this generic probe bits, right? So I said that's the catch-all type, and uh, it can be used for anything. Then the address where that's going to be mapped into memory is 400,238. Uh, if we go back and we look at the segment information, we see for the interp section, uh, yep, that also said it was going, it wanted to be at, you know, it would be at 400,238 in memory. I mean, it's not just by itself getting mapped into memory, it's just a consequence of this first load segment getting mapped into memory this thing will just end up at this particular address because it has this particular file offset, right? So, but down in the section information, uh, you know, it's saying where it's going to end up in memory. It's saying if it has, well, it's saying what the offset is on, on disk to this particular thing. And so, since we have these many more section headers, right, we have more granular information about where particular information is mapped on disk. So, yeah, perfect. This is our opportunity to see if there was any sec, you know, I said before, you know, what's between 6DC and E18? I said maybe it's section information. I can see based on this that there's no, you know, section information, well, wait, how big is this one? 660 plus 7C. One second. I mean, it's still not big enough overall, but just curious though. We got 660 plus 7C. Uh, that's not right. What the heck? Right, 6DC. So basically, this last, this um, exception frame, one right there, that section header starts at 660, goes to 6DC. So that basically is the last data in that first load segment that's going to get mapped up into memory. And so there's no section header information specifying that they've got anything in that 700 or, you know, anything beyond 60C and less than E18. So going back to your question about where does that data come from, I don't know. It seems to be mostly zeros, but I can't say it's all zeros. I didn't check that it's all zeros. So basically the point is we have this much more granular view of where the specific information that the linker was using when it was putting stuff together was. Because if we only have the segment information, it's all just kind of jumbled together and mapped up into memory. The program will still run. The program internally has got all of its offsets at the right places and all that. It's just if we're trying to analyze the program, the section information is, inf is important so that we know that a particular region is used for, you know, constructors or a particular region is used for destructors. This is important if you take like Corey's Exploits 1 class, for instance, you know, he uses the constructors, he uses, you know, a buffer overflow that goes in and overwrites, uh, actually I don't think it was buffer overflow, I think it was heap overflow, or not stack buffer, but heap buffer overflow, that overwrites some information with the constructors function pointers, and then he, he manipulates those to uh, when a constructor, actually I think it's destructors, when the destructors are called, then uh, it causes the attacker's code to run and he can uh, invoke things. So if you don't know where the destructors are, if you don't have segment information, uh, you would have to potentially do, you know, full static analysis of this thing to see when it and when and where it's going to uh, call destructor information. So, so basically this just gives us a much more granular view of what's going on in the program. And so now I'm going to talk about a couple of these that we care about. I think the main ones are going to be the got plt and the got. So dot got is global offset table and dot got plt. The plt stands for procedure linkage table. And so the global offset table, procedure linkage table, 
is basically going to be the uh, import address table as far as we're concerned. So I'll show the dynamic linking that happens and it's going to have to do with this .got.plt. And you can see we've got BSS sections and we've got data sections and all that. BSS is set to no bits, right? So although it has a, a particular size of 10, right, you're not going to treat that as a file size because the type is set to no bits. Okay. Is class happen now? Say again? Is class. Is it happening this year? What was no, it no, no, no. Is it like half? Oh, he has one class. He has the first class is two days on Linux. It covers the basic buffer overflows and heap overflows Linux. And then later on, he has a second day. He has a second class, two days on Windows. And it's basic buffer overflows, but then additional techniques to bypass step and ALSR and stuff. ASL. 